Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about deadlines and allocating developers. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, I would like to know how your company goes about giving projects to developers. If there's a project that needs to begin getting worked on, do you wait for the right developer to be available to assign it to them or do you assign that project to any dev that is currently available to take it on? For example, let's say you have a project with a shorter deadline than normal and your dev capacity isn't very good. Most devs are very busy and overloaded but you have a junior on the team who is available but may not possess the skills to deliver. Do you assign it to that developer anyway? Because, uh, because at the end of the day the most important thing is the deadline right and as long as the product launches maybe with some features that were in scope that uh, is being put on hold for a post launch you can always go back and assign a more experienced developer to that project post launch to work on it correct or is that or is this thinking recklessly well uh, I'm just gonna stop you there immediately and I will tell you this uh, in theory, yes. In theory, it is correct of you to think that you can always go back and fix something. In practice, this never happens. Uh, usually, what it's a very it's a very nice uh, it's a segment in I think it is Clean Code from the book Clean Code, where the claim basically is in the book that if you put a to do in your code. That to-do will stay there forever, because if you don't fix it immediately, it's never going to happen. And I can only chime in here and say that I agree with that statement 100%. I will go as far as to say that, you, uh, that anything that you build for most of your career is going to be something that you have one shot at making. The reason is very simple, because when you make something and you launch it and, you sh and it becomes used, depending on the nature of the feature and the future work that you're going gonna, you're gonna to do, you're never going to go back and touch that again, or you're never going to be able to rewrite it in the way that you want. Sometimes you're forced to because you have to, like you literally have to, but many times it's much more convenient for your stakeholders and deadlines and budgets and so forth to just continue adding to the thing that you already created. And the this is, uh, and you can also, you should also remember that usually the way that work in any IT company goes like how it works is that anything you want to do in terms of improvements or fixing things that isn't directly associated with the thing that you're doing at this very moment or the priorities of the company is going to be seen as pointless it's going to be seen as something that isn't critical in some way so if you work on feature A and it doesn't really turn out the way you want because you allocated a, say a junior developer to it and you think that you're going to go back and fix it, well, that depends, because if feature B isn't really in the same sphere of code or the same sphere of things that you're uh, you're focusing on as a company, you're never going to go back and fix feature A until, unless you lobby. Like the process of fixing it is going to be really tough. You're going to have to, it basically comes down to selling a refactor. And in the right company, you might be able to sell a refactor, but usually what you're basically going to ask your uh, your stakeholder says, can I get time now to go and fix this thing here and risk uh, breaking it and do all the regression testing and like all of this, like this, uh, this song and dance all over again, just to make it better. And it is a very hard thing for you in many cases to sell that and get people invested into it. So in my company, what we usually do is I'm just because we our company strategy is very simple it's it's independent teams and each team completely controls their own like the management just gives us our projects like regardless like we have different areas of responsibility and it doesn't really matter what uh, what our capacity looks like they tell us you're gonna do this and then we say we can do this or we're gonna need more resources and so forth so we're ultimately responsible towards management to deliver 
and we request resources as needed but and sometimes other teams need to be relocated and like help us out if the capacity uh, if we don't have the capacity and there's not enough people in the hiring process but each team does their own thing and the general way of doing it at least at my company is that if we get in a story we try to like uh, if you feel very uncomfortable as say a junior developer to take on this piece of work you are allowed to say that no I don't feel comfortable with this and usually what the team will do is that they will shuffle around work or that uh, if a senior developer is working on something that is say simpler they might go and to do this hard thing and then like we do like a, a switch or something like that or we might if there's time or stuff like that we might uh, give the the task to a two developer type of thing where the the junior developer takes charge of the story but they have a senior which can help them out and answering questions and stuff like that so like there's so it's really rare i don't think we've ever been in that situation where we we haven't been able to meet a deadline because we were at so we were so overloaded that there was no other option than to give a junior developer felt uncomfortable taking charge of a specific story the responsibility of doing so we've never been in that situation there's always a way for us to move things about usually now in my specific team we do something else or we're, we're doing this but we're also adding another dimension to it and that is that we account for learning opportunities and we account for deadlines so in other words if we have a really really sharp deadline we will always look at the aptitude of the person who's going to take care of the thing that we're dealing with so we will it, unless it's completely impossible and we still haven't really it's very rare that this happens if it is completely possible then the like we'll go just go up and down the list basically because we know each other within the team so well that we know our areas of expertise we complete we always knowledge share but some people are better at different things than others because they've been involved at different levels in different features so the person who is most qualified will always be the first choice if it's a really sharp deadline and then we go down the list until we find the person who's going to get this work done the quickest but on the other hand if we have enough time we always look for stories that will give good learning opportunities for other members of the team because the thing that we have we focus a lot on to just avoid this is to create individuals who have specialist knowledge we don't want to get into a position where if one of our developers gets sick or something like that then nobody can do anything because all the knowledge of how this feature works only exists within one person and we go to great lengths to avoid this like every single time we have a story where we see that oh this is a very good opportunity now for us to do some pair programming with a junior or another senior or someone who hasn't really learned this domain we do it every single time no exclusions like no exceptions whatsoever as long as the as the deadline allows for it and then i would say that lastly we also take into account as uh, i was saying the personal aptitude for certain stories so if we're dealing with a like i like to call it a backbone feature if we are going to build something that is extremely core to future work that we're going to do we don't just give that to an arbitrary person we really look at who is going to be the most qualified sometimes we need all of the developers sometimes we're not just giving that to one person we're actually gonna and that's actually the rule it usually ends up that way if we're gonna give you let's say for the sake of argument the responsibility of managing translations which is something that is it's completely core to the entire system if you're gonna have a international product you're not gonna be allowed to, like we're not gonna give that to a junior developer because if that if that person does that in isolation and doesn't have the experience to do this it's going to fuck up the entire like the productivity of everybody is going to go down so we make sure that at the very least there's an experienced developer involved and like we design it together like the junior can implement it implement the thing but they're not doing so alone so what i want you to take away from this is that at least from my perspective the hardest part about allocating resources is to have 
s more experienced developers who are so intimate with the work process that they know how to lead. They know the strengths and weaknesses of all the people in the team. And they so and at the same time, having that perspective of uh, the bigger perspective, if that makes sense, to be able to figure out that, well, if these features here, it's very good if this person is involved in those features. That it, they don't have to do the work. They should just be involved. And we should knowledge share on this story and that story because th this has a lot of interesting and very good domain knowledge that needs to be shared with these developers. To have this healthy balance, you can think of it as a coach within uh, for a sports team or something like that. It's so hard to come by people like that. And I feel very, very fortunate that we have that in my team. A lot of the other teams don't have that. And the outcome of having a team of semi junior or mid-level developers who don't really get any coaching is that the company pays for that in legacy code because you have developers who don't really know how to do things well and you have to train them somehow and training by doing is the way you have to do it and so the system actually you pay through bad code that's what you're doing but we try to deal with this in the best way we can and we never ever get uh, even though each team takes care of their own process practically all of them are going about things the same way if you feel uncomfortable with dealing some with something we always go for trust and transparency tra transparency it is better for you to admit to us that this is something that you feel a little bit uncomfortable about and you want some help than it is for you to make a really shit implementation because it's not about pride for us it's about good results and learning and that's that that is always the focus have a great day